What's up, everybody? Uh, unfortunately, my, all my audio is gone, so I'm going to do a voiceover. <laughs> Hopefully, this can still help someone. All right, so we just moved into this house, and we have this water heater here, and there is no hot water. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to basically rebuild part of it. I'm going to replace both heating elements, the upper and lower, and I'm going to replace both thermostats, upper and lower. All right, now let's talk about some reasons why you might have running water, but it's not hot. First is sediment. So if your unit is a little bit older, there could be sediment, could be buildup, lime scale, all of that inside of it that's covering the heating element and it's causing the heating elements to have a hard time to heat up the water. In this case, what you'll need to do is drain the tank, remove the heating elements, and you can descale them and clean them but they don't really cost any money it's easier and quicker to just replace them I and mean, we're not even talking about twenty dollars each one and if you can get a kit like what i did it's like twenty eight dollars for the kit you get both heating elements and thermostats and to me that's just the way to go another reason you could be experiencing no hot water is exactly what my reason was my unit is only it's only like three years old so I knew it wasn't a whole lot of buildup. It was a little bit, but not really. The issue is it was a foreclosure. So what happened was when the house had no water in it, it was winterized, so there was no water in any of the systems, someone came in and turned on the power. They turned on the power to the water heater. And when the, the, the water heater has to have be full of water before you turn it on and energize, those heating elements, otherwise they'll pop. <laughs> so that's exactly what happened to mine. As you'll see later on in this video, it popped. So I had to replace those heating elements. And I just went on ahead and replaced the thermostats because I was in there. As a side note, if you're experiencing lots of buildup from lime or just sediment, rust, one thing you might want to consider is checking your pipes. You know, you might have galvanized pipe or cast iron piping or something like that. You could replace those pipes, but an easier method would just be to get a water softening system uh, so that you won't have as much buildup in your water heater then. All right, now the first thing you want to do before you get started is turn off that power. <laughs> turn off the power, and then you want to get a bucket. And once you've turned off the power, you can proceed to Go down to the little valve at the bottom, the drain valve, open it up, drain it into the bucket. Now, if you're one of those people that is fortunate enough to have your water heater in like the garage and not in the basement where you need to kind of drain it up, you could just connect the hose to it, turn it on, and walk away. Come back in like five or ten minutes, and the thing should be completely drained. But if you're like me and this thing wants you to work, you're going to need a bucket. You're going to have to make some trips. So... One thing you do to flush it out real quick is hook a hose up to it and leave the pot, the water on and then just open it up and it's going to flush out some stuff. Uh, I did that only a little bit came out because again, my unit isn't that old, but that is one thing you do. Then you want to shut off the water up there. And then after that, you go ahead and just drain it out. Now, uh, once you shut off the water, going in you want to shut off the water that's going into the water heater but leave the uh, pipe that's carrying the hot water throughout the house open and then what you want to do is go open up every faucet you can but on the hot side and that'll have the water flowing out of that drain valve really quickly another thing you do if you're just buying this house or if you're a plumber doing a job for someone else this would be a fine time to check the sump pump so as you're draining the water out and you fill up your bucket, you fill up your bucket here, uh, carry the water over to the sump pump and pour it in there. Make sure you get to the point where you're almost submerging the sump pump to make sure it activates. If it doesn't activate, you let the homeowner know and now you know for your own personal reasons that you need to replace or service that sump pump. Probably replace it if it's old. All right, here's the kit I was talking about earlier. It was... Made by Everbuilt, and I got it from Home Depot. It was about $28. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It comes with two heating elements, two thermostats, and two gaskets. Now, it's very important when you're choosing a heating element to make sure that it is the same wattage as display on the water heater. Because if you get the wrong wattage, it's not going to work right. This was 4,500 watts, which is 
it's pretty standard, but still look for that label to double check, triple check, quadruple check. All right, now that we've evacuated all the water out of the systems, time to remove those panels. So it's just two Phillips screws, one on the bottom, one on the top. Start with the bottom first so that it doesn't just fall off once you get the bottom one off. You start at the top, start with the bottom, and then you just hold the plate in place while you unscrew the top screw. And it's a good idea to keep all your screws in a safe place. Next, we'll be faced with this foam. So we just need to remove it. You reach in, pinch it, pull it, boop. And behind it, you'll see the top of the thermostat. This is the upper one, so it has that reset button there. And then um, you remove it on the bottom, and that is where the heating element lays. So we want to put that with that plate, keep everything together. Next thing you want to do is remove this plastic, and you just pull it out like so. Now you have a clear view of the heating element there on the bottom and like I said the thermostat at the top. Now would be a good idea to take a photograph of how that thing looks. We're just placing that with everything else. So yeah right now it would be a good idea to take a photograph of how that looks so you remember where the wires go. Again double check and make sure that power is off. Uh, now what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to check for power using a non-contact voltage meter always test this on something that's live okay test this on something that you know has power which at some point i'm going to demonstrate right here this ryobi light we know that has power it's plugged in i'm going to test it boom we know it works all right so always trust but verify so now we're going to go over here nothing 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 i'm not even in a shop but nothing now we can proceed to touch these wires again take a picture so you remember where everything goes and just unscrew those terminals using a phillips and pull the wires away and then we'll get to how to unscrew the heating element all right now it's time to remove the heating element and you need a special tool for you don't not necessarily you can use I believe a 33 millimeter socket, uh, but you can get this tool relatively cheap from Home Depot or whatever. And here's here it is, and you just use a screwdriver for leverage. Then you want to make sure it's square and lined up perfectly over the heating element. Push firmly, not real hard, but firmly, and turn slowly to the left until it breaks free, and then screw unscrew it. It's a little weird because the heating element's going to be like top heavy. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> and so uh, once it's loose, just pull it back out. Hopefully you have an easier time than I did, as you'll see in a second. Uh, but here I'm just simply demonstrating how you want to hold on to the screwdriver when you're about to loosen it up and also when you're tightening it up as well. Just like that. Hold it just like that. Give you the perfect leverage and you should get it off without breaking or snapping anything. So here we are, the moment of truth. I'm about to pull it out, got it all loose, and you just back it out very gently. You see that? Oh, oh, it's a little cold. Some, oh, what is that? Oh, huh? I don't know. What is it? Now, sometimes if yours is like mine and it pops, uh, one of the bars broke, and so it was kind of poking out, sticking out, and it's going to just require a little ingenuity to get that thing out i think i just used uh, a pry bar would have been great i didn't have one at the time i think i just used it with my screwdriver or flathead and just kind of pushed it in and fished it out and there she is she's out uh it's obviously not supposed to look like that the one i pulled out is is, is if you didn't know the one on the top or the left depending on <laughs> the timing uh the time stamp uh so yeah so Generally, if it's a really easy job to just pull out, if you have a little instance like that where it broke, you might have some trouble. Now, putting it back in, before you do that, you see all that crud around there? Clean that up. Get you a wire brush or, or like a firm, not a wire brush, excuse me, a firm bristle brush. A toothbrush would be perfect. And just clean those threads up. If you don't, it could result in leaks. All right, now once you've cleaned those threads up, you just, there's nothing to put on there, no plumber's tape or anything. You just screw it in firmly. Make sure it's straight. So you don't want to cross thread this thing. Make sure it's straight. You need some kind of strong fingers. Uh, my fingers are pretty strong. So 
it wasn't a big deal for me to put that in there. Uh, and, and you'll see what I mean as you're doing it, but it's, it's not terribly difficult. Uh, now it's time to reconnect those wires on the bottom first before we do the thermostat. If you're going to do thermostats, keep washing, but I'm going to connect the wires on the bottom and then disconnect the wires at the top. Again, take a picture uh, and then show you how to remove the thermostat. It'll be easier to reconnect the wires on the bottom because we don't have to worry about or figure out where the wires go once we've replaced the thermostat. So here's the thermostat removed. I'm going to show you how to remove it. It's in there with two tabs. It doesn't really connect to anything because it just uh, leans up against the water heater to measure the temperature of the water and then it sends a signal through those wires to the heating element that tells it when to heat up and when to stop heating. So it's held in place by two tabs on the side. There's one to the right and there's the other one to the left. You see it there, little metal tabs. Um, it could be a little bit tricky, but all you need is like a flathead screwdriver or a little small pry bar to pull those four and just slide the unit up. Putting it back in is the same way. It's a little easier if you can catch it properly because there's like a, a little slit looking thing that'll help just push it down. It's kind of hard to do with one hand on camera, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how it slides down. And uh, so installation is the same as removal. That's all. And now you wire up. All right, now moving on to the bottom is basically the same as the top, except it's a little easier because you have a lot less wires. Again, just, you know, remove the plate, remove the foam, remove the plastic, clean out that. Uh, those threads once you remove the heating element and you just have a couple of wires the heating the, I mean the thermostat is a lot smaller so it's easier to slide in there and there you have it you know you just button everything back up make sure you remember to put the plastic back on put the foam in then put the uh, front face plate on and last but not least Fill the tank up with water. Turn the water on. Do not turn. Do not turn on the power. Fill up the tank first. Wait till you no longer hear water going into the tank. Test the drain plug uh, to make sure it's full. Uh, then go and turn on some hot water. It won't be hot. It's going to be cold. Turn on some hot water. Then run downstairs real quick or wherever the water heater is to make sure you hear it fill up from the water you just drained out of it. And then it shut off. And then you turn on the power. And that is it. I'm upside down. But hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys next video.